Hi, my name is Jacob Bakovsky and I am a support engineer here at Go Engineer. And uh, today we're going to learn how to automatically generate configurations based off of parameters from an Excel table. So it's, it's quite easy to create one Allen wrench in SolidWorks, but I have to create an Allen wrench for every one of these parameters because my boss wants me to make metric 1.5 to metric 16. Um, and these are all the different geometric parameters for that. But I don't have to reinvent the wheel every time. In this case, the Allen wrench. So I can input these parameters and have it automatically spit out, per, spit out configurations as shown here. M2, M3, and so on and so forth. So let's go ahead and learn how to do that. To begin, I'm going to start a new part. And I'm going to start my sweep profile on the top plane. In this case, SOLIDWORKS has the polygon option. So I'm going to select the polygon with the inscribed circle and drag it out to some position. Okay, great. And I know I'm going to start because my diameter, right, from my table is 1.5 for metric 1.5. So the inscribed circle here will be. 1.5. Oh, excuse me, I am in the wrong units. And to def fully define the sketch, I'm going to make the point here and the origin horizontal. Notice that my sketch turns black, it's fully defined, I cannot move it. Excellent. Okay, now that I have the profile defined for the sweep, I need to create the sweep path. I can create that either on the right plane or the front plane. I'll choose the front plane. Well, I need to view normal to it, so I will view normal to the front plane and start sketching my line segments. I'm going to create the first vertical line. I know that the first vertical line will be B, and that will be 45 millimeters. So I need to lay, I need to dimension, I need to create the dimension at 45 millimeters. But not only that, I need to label this dimension. So if I double click, click double click quickly, you will see the modify dimension uh, dialog box appear. And it, if you can see right here that it's telling me that I have dimension one at sketch number four. If I click in the highlighted area above, I can change that dimension. I actually want to label that B. That's going to be my B dimension in this case. It's extremely important when creating design tables to label your dimensions. Otherwise, it would get confusing when creating the table when you have D1, D2, etc., etc. Whereas when we create variables for dimensions, we know exactly what variables that we're varying and manipulating. So I've created B. B is 45. Let's refer to our chart. We know that A is 16 and R is 2. So let's create those. I will create a line that is horizontal and dimension it 16 millimeters. I need to modify this and I need to label it A. A at sketch 4. I also need to create the fillet. So I'll go here to my sketch fillet. I know it's 2, so I'm going to click dimension and click the checkbox to accept. Now, I know this is 2, but I do want to create a variable for this, and I'm going to call it R. It'll make it easy to vary later on. Okay, so I've created my sweep path, and I have my sweep profile. So I'm going to exit the sketch. Notice the rebuild sign goes away. I have no minus signs on my sketches, and they're all fully defined. The next step that we need to do is go to our features and sweep this. So the sketch profile, we're going to pick the profile that we created. And the path, we're going to select the path that we created. And SOLIDWORKS automatically generates the image. 
So good practice to begin with is to rename the first configuration. So the first configuration is always going to be the default configuration. But I know that in this model, this is M1.5 Allen wrench. So I can left click. F2 is the hotkey, or left click once. And I rename this to M1.5. This establishes M1.5 as the default initial configuration. Now I need to create multiple configurations based on parameters from my design tree in a design table. So to do that, insert, tables, design table. And I want to auto create this one and allow the model edits to update the design table. So if I change a parameter in the model, it'll update on the design table back and forth. It's parametrically linked, just like it is in drawings and assemblies. So I'm going to hit the green check. And notice that it asked me to select from the following dimensions to add to the design table. So it was good practice to label those dimensions, so now I know exactly what dimensions that I'm going to vary. And I'm going to select all of them. So if I actually hold shift and hold the first and the last one, I can grab all of them or hold control and select them and hit OK. So now you notice that it, it creates my design table. Well, so I can start manually typing in values here. So I use two, uh, but I know I already have this on a design table. So I'm just going to copy these and place them in. Yes. Okay, so my radius is varying by two every time. Uh, I'm putting in the parameters here, and and I'm varying the diameter here, and I just have my configuration names are listed here. So I'm going to click anywhere in the graphics area, left-click anywhere in the graphics area to accept. So now it tells me information. The design table generated the following configurations, so it, conf it generated all of my configurations. Hit OK, and now I see that all of them have been created automatically. Okay, so say I need to add a couple more things, like parameters, like maybe color, maybe part numbers, maybe materials. So let's go ahead and do that. I actually know that this is going to be made of cast alloy steel. So I'll select cast alloy steel as my material. And then in the design table, I can right click, edit table. It's going to update the design table and it notices that I have a new parameter that please select items you would like to add to the design table. Yeah, I would like to add material. Hit OK. It brings up my um, Excel sheet again. So if I look at the, I can look, I can actually change the materials here, right in Excel, and it grabs the list. So I say, oh well, I actually want them all to be cast alloy steel. So I could drag this and make them all cast alloy steel, or say I want some of them to be plain carbon steel. I can change. I want this one to be brass, whatever. Click outside. I would like to link display states to show material appearance uh, because brass does look different than plain carbon steel. So I hit yes. And I notice that it has linked my display state and it's brass. So that is how you add additional parameters to your SOLIDWORKS design table. My name is Jacob Bikowski. Thank you for tuning in to this episode of Design Table brought to you by Go Engineer. Thanks and have a great day. Mm -hmm.